Wi-Fi Sheep would like to say a huge thank you to all of you that kindly support us. Help us continue to bring new videos like this. Join patreon.com forward slash Wi-Fi Sheep from just $1 a month. Hi, how are you doing? And welcome back to Wi-Fi Sheep right here on YouTube with me, Tom. Today, we're carrying on with our long running Tiny Basic Computers 8-bit own build project. If you're not up to speed, do check out our playlist, which should be on screen now, and you can follow through till you reach the point here today. So we left off with a revision of our Sogless breadboard design and a couple of firmware updates to the code that we upload to our Arduinos. As part of that revision design, I switched to using the standalone Atmega 328P microcontroller chips. You may have seen we used them as a replacement for the TV uh, video out terminal side of the most recent design board. Naturally, the conclusion for our project is to switch from prototype breadboarding right through to getting a professional printed circuit board made. And that's where our partners at PCB GoGo come in. PCB GoGo's assembly services include PCB manufacturing and assembly, component sourcing, functional testing, and IC programming. PCB GoGo's manufacturing bases are equipped with the most advanced production equipment, such as Yamaha pick and place machines, reflow oven, wave soldering machines, X ray, and AOI testing machines all operated by highly skilled technical personnel. PCB GoGo is a leading specialist in surface mount, through hole and mixed technology PCB assembly and electronic manufacturing services, as well as turnkey electronic PCB assembly. PCB GoGo provides easy and cost effective online ordering services from prototype to mass production. So join today. Sign up for your free account today at pcbgogo.com. Now, in the past month, I will add that I now have my own custom Tiny Basic Computers PCB actually sent off to PCB GoGo, and it has actually now been assembled in China at their factories, and I'm just eagerly awaiting them to post them back to me here in the UK. Once we've got these boards, we'll test them out and hopefully we'll be able to build our very first professionally made PCB version of the Tiny Basic Computers system. However, today we're going to look at a problem I've been having while using the Atmega 328P standalone microcontrollers. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is the Arduino Uno board and we use these to flash the Atmega 328P microcontroller chips. Now, when buying Unos, you can buy clone Unos that look like this. They look virtually identical, and they are identical uh, functionality-wise, but they don't have the standalone pull-out uh, microcontroller microprocessor chip, instead relying on a 328 um, packaged as you can see here, as a little fixed uh, uh, surface mount package like so. And that's very similar to, or actually identical to what you see on the clone uh, nanos that we use for the build. So what you need to make sure you do actually get is an Uno, or even an Uno clone, that has the um, package chip, the Atmega 328P, as a standalone chip. Uh, these chips have been extremely useful and we are using one in our Tiny Basic Computers build. So this is revision three of the main uh, bread, Sogless breadboard build. And you can see here we actually have a 328P used for the video side. And these chips are absolutely fantastic. Um, you buy them very, very cheaply in little kits like this. So you normally get the chip itself, a uh, chip holder. And then the only thing this actually needs to run is five volts, a ground line, and a clock or a crystal, a 16 megahertz or 16.000 uh, quartz crystal, and two ceramic disc capacitors to drive the crystal circuit. And that's it. So these chips are absolutely fantastic for putting very, very low cost computer logic into your designs. And that's why we've been using them as part of Tiny Basic Computers build. 
Now, in order to flash these chips, you need a board like an Uno that can accept new chips being put in it. You can flash chips and you can take them away from the Uno. And as I said, these chips will run independently. And that's fine if you're going to do one or two, but I'm likely to do quite a few of these different chips, which means you have to take the chip out every time. I don't have a proper chip at all, so I've been using a flathead screwdriver and just lifting both sides of the chip out. There we go. The problem with doing this is that this socket is not designed to have chips repetitively pulled in and out of it and it will start to deteriorate and wear over time. Plus, you can also end up, if you're not careful, bending the legs on chips, especially if they're being put in and out of the sockets constantly. So it's not an ideal solution and especially for my Uno board here, I'm actually going to be using it for flashing an awful lot of these standalone 328P chips. So uh, we do need a solution. One of the best solutions for this is the use of a ZIF socket. ZIF stands for Zero Insertion Force. And basically it's a special gated socket with a lever. And when you pull the lever, it grips, you see the metal poles here, or um, tongues if you like inside moving, it grips the legs of the chip. So if we actually put one of our 328Ps in, it's loose and then we clamp down. It doesn't damage or cut the legs, it just clamps onto them and now the chip is securely seated and we can flash it, program it. When we want to release it, we can simply pull the lever back and then the chip is completely loose and comes out. There's no friction fitting or pulling of parts. So these things are absolutely ideal. Two problems. First problem, if I wanted to fit this into my existing Uno, I did think we could just slot this into the existing chip socket however it doesn't go and the reason it doesn't go is that the sadists that manufactured this particular unit and I'll just show you this bent the pin legs round 90 degrees so it's not actually possible to fit this into an existing chip socket it just won't go so that's problem number one, and there's no way to actually fix that. Problem number two is with the design of the Uno itself. So even if I, let's say, took this chip socket out, which I'm going to today, and we tried to then put this through the holes and mount it, this SIF socket is quite a big component in its own right, and it actually overhangs the board this side, which is fine as clearance but it actually hits and clashes with one of the two capacitors here on the side of the board. So that itself is also another problem. So we can't just mount that even if we get it to fit. It's not going to work because we're going to hit other components. So we're going to need a solution to make this work, and that means modifying this Uno board. So as I mentioned, what we're going to do is we're actually going to take this chip uh, socket out completely. So we're going to actually unpick all the solder, and we're going to remove socket but we still need a way of bridging this higher in something that will actually clip into these awkward pins so i had a rummage through my toolbox and i've got this which is reverse header so this is normal pin header that you'd solder in and this is reverse where you actually plug things into the header and i checked to see if this zip socket would actually fit in the header and it's a tight fit, but it does. But let's just make sure we are actually making electrical connectivity between, let's say, this pin here and the first metal bracket there. So I've got my multimeter here. We'll power on, and we put it in continuity mode. And all that means is when the two probes touch each other, it'll make a noise. So it puts a very small battery current through and we can just check. So we hold ground. It's actually very it's tricky to do this around the camera. Hold ground on there and probe in there. And yeah, that makes a connection. Okay, so we know it's a good solid connection through to the pins. We know this is gonna work. 
Now, the pins themselves, or well, this header, is actually quite long, so we're going to have to cut this down to size to fit. I did think about using a hacksaw, but I think we'll just be very lazy and let's see now, where's the final pin? We'll just pull that back so we can see the final pin. So we want to cut about there and I'm just going to use these pair of clips just to cut through. There we go. You do lose unfortunately one pin as a result of doing that, but it's worth sacrificing in order to cut this down to the correct size. And then we can just repeat that on the other side. Yeah, there we go, no problem. Obviously you do create a bit of mess when cutting up things, just brush that one side. Okay, there we are. So we've now got a height adjusted uh, header and what we could now do is that would actually fit straight into the socket. And I think that would actually work, you know. But it's... Yeah, I don't have to leave it like that. I have to just solder the straight in, take the socket out. I'm tempted to take the socket out. Uh, mainly because that's quite a height and a bit unruly. So, yeah, let's... I think we might have a look at desoldering this socket. Okay, desoldering. Now, whenever I do anything to do with soldering or desoldering in any capacity, I always get comments and complaints that I'm not doing it right every time without fail. So, this time we're going to be doing this. This is the way I do it. Um, I certainly wouldn't recommend doing this. If you're trying to take chips out of vintage electronics like 80s micros or things like that, I would not recommend doing this because you'll end up destroying and ripping traces out the PCB. I think for this will be okay because this Uno is a relatively brand new clone board, so it's a fresh new board and modern PCBs are made to much higher standards than those of the 80s. So what we've got to do is we're going to take this soldered uh, chip socket out. So I'll turn the board over and we've got to basically desolder all these pins here. So what I've got is quite a crude desolderer uh, sort of sucker punch thing. I do have a little bit of fresh uh, pewter based solder which we could put on the joint to help things flow. So my soldering iron is heated up and again I'm doing this around a tripod so I can't see what I'm doing properly um, but let's have a go see what we can do. So first things first we're just going to heat up the iron's actually heating quite well so I've got my solder punch ready or sucker punch ready. There we go, and that did actually take some of the solder up. It's not a perfect process, it does take quite a bit of time and patience, so we're going to be here a while. Okay, so a little bit of time later, and I think we've just about got that loose. Let's see. We now turn the ball back over. We can very carefully just take a screwdriver and just see if we can prise. Yes, we can. It's off. Carefully. If it was still stuck, which it isn't, you don't want to pull it because you can pull the traces off the PCB. But there we go. Uh, we can have a quick inspection of the board. Um, just flip it around. So, a little bit of a mess on the uh, silk screen. Again, you want to try and remove these metal fragments, just bits of solder fragment all over the um, workbench area as well, so just got to watch out for that because these can create shorts. Let's turn the board around. So the next thing we need to do is to mount our uh, adapted ZIF socket. Now I'm going to put it this way because the chips have to go in a certain way into Arduino's and you can see this little notch here, that's the same as the notch on the chip so you could actually just put a straight chip in and solder on if you wanted to but obviously we're doing this whole process because we want to be able to remove chips so let's see if we can feed this now through if it'll go and it will and there's all the pins through so that's looking okay just make sure it is sitting flat and flush. It's still quite tall, but it's better than it was. 
Okay. So let's just put the handle down so we can try and lay this relatively flat. It's not looking too bad. So again, we'll use some of the flux just to reflow and put the new solder joints on. So, so soldering iron is still heated and on. Fresh solder. And I will go back over this off camera just to make sure it's fine. Because again, I can't see as well as you can on camera. So yeah, okay. So that's looking great. So we've now got our ZIF socket attached. So we can now hopefully and easily drop in chips we want to flash or reprogram, lock like so. And that is now our modded Arduino. And we can now reflash, reprogram and pop the chip out. And then do another one. Before we carry on, I just want to show you the paper plans for the new uh, Tiny Basic Computers PCB that we've got coming up. I showed you some briefings at the beginning of the video in the introduction. Now, these haven't come back from China yet, but this is a scale printout of the, if you like, the PCB layout. And you can actually see it's going to be a little bit bigger than our Arduino. Let's get that around. There we go. Arduino. Um, UNO boards, but this is ideal and it's one of the reasons we need the UNO with the ZIF socket on is so that we can, as I've shown you already, flash the chip, lock in there, flash it, and then we can actually use the paper plan just to test fit to make sure components actually do fit. So our 3 to 8 P's will be fitting here and the clone nano board will be sitting like that. But um, yeah, now looking forward to getting these back and we'll be doing this in a future episode of Tiny Basic Computers. Right, but anyway, back to our Zift Uno board and let's put a blank chip in and let's just flash a test program onto this just to make sure this is working correctly. Okay, so we've got Windows 7 laptop set up. Let's plug in to USB. Should we get the cord the right way around? So far, so good. It's found it. Installing a driver. Let's hope this works. While that's doing that, we will load a fresh Arduino session. The device has successfully installed on COM port 5, which is fantastic. So we hopefully haven't fried it during the um, desoldering and resoldering of components. This is a blank sketch. So we want to, let's load the programming very quickly just to test things. And the best one to use is Blink. So if you go File, Examples, Basics, and Blink. And it's a open new window with the uh, Blink script in or program. And what this does, this makes one of the LEDs uh, flash on the UNO or any uh, Arduino that you actually upload to. So we need to go to Tools, Port, make sure we select COM port 5, select the board as an Arduino, Arduino UNO. Okay, and we should be able to simply upload this code straight to the chip. Let's click Upload to see what happens. So it's going to compile it first. It shouldn't take too long. It's a very simple program. That's the compile done. Now we're uploading. Uploading done. And we can see the load light now flashes, which means that it successfully burnt the program to this chip. Okay, so we fixed the problem with the Arduino Uno board, so hopefully we're not going to be bending any more chip legs or damaging the socket on the board itself. And if you've enjoyed this project, do check out the many other electronic and maker projects we have right here on Wi-Fi Sheep under our Tiny Basic Computers playlist. And if that's really tempted your interest, then why not join our Tiny Basic Computers Facebook group? The address is facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash WFS Tiny Basic. 
If you haven't done already, please do like and subscribe to us here on Wi-Fi Sheep. And as always, I will see you real soon right here on the channel. Until next time, bye for now.